the sky pen, smart lights, Google's lineup, and Windows Phone 8 launching soon. It's Tuesday, October 30th, 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of iWake. So on the show today, I've got a few stories, and just a few, the stories I do have are some good ones. First up is LiveScribe. They are launching a new pen, and they have launched a new pen, that is Wi-Fi enabled, the Sky Pen they're calling it, is a smart pen, so it records what you write on the special paper, records the audio, syncs that up to what you're writing. I've got one of their old Pulse pens, and really do enjoy it. The new Sky Pen, the big thing is, as I said, it's Wi-Fi enabled, and it automatically syncs to your Evernote account. And they've worked with Evernote to enable uh, the playback of your your uh, your Sky Cast, or uh, Pen Cast, as I like to call them. And uh, basically, we don't need to use that crappy LiveScribe app anymore. And it's all done through Evernote. And the integration here is so slick, so seamless, that this seems like finally a, a great solution. I, I've used the, Sky, the uh, LiveScribe before. I own one, but gave up using it because of the, the syncing over USB and all those other things that just made it um, less, less awesome than I anticipated it being. So uh, the SkyPen is out, uh, a couple different varieties. Starting at $170 for two gigabytes, all the way up to $250 for eight gigabytes. So, livescribe.com for more information there. Next up, Philips is, uh, has launched or is launching uh, basically these smart lights. According to Mac rumors, they can be set up in minutes. This intuitive app allows you to remote control your home lighting to help secure your home, personalize your home lighting experience with custom settings, program timers, and daily schedules all through your iOS device. It's all seamlessly integrated, as Philip says. The, uh, the Hue, as they're calling the smart light system, is upgradable and future-proof, with potential for more features that can be downloaded and enjoyed in the future. They're working on new features, such as geolocation, to automatically turn lights on when you walk in the door or leave your house to turn them off. And they're also working with integrating with other media, including sound and video. The bulbs are sold exclusively through Apple's store uh, beginning today. The Hue is $200 for three bulbs plus the wireless link that can support up to 50 bulbs. Additional bulbs are $59 a piece. So that's what it is, the Hue. I'm very excited about this as I am, in fact, moving to an apartment, so I'll have control over lighting. So I've been looking into the, getting the Wemo and other automation devices. And uh, this seems like a very cool solution. These are LED base lights. They should last a while. But to me, it seems a little pricey. For $200, you get three bulbs plus wireless link. But the $59 per bulb seems exorbitantly expensive. Now, I may find that's not the case as I look into how much bulbs actually cost these days. But my initial inclination is this is pricey, and hopefully the price goes down. Uh, and uh, so... That's not to say I may not get this. I may get this in the end because of the convenience factor and the coolness factor. That may do it for me. That you know, I really want to automate my home. I want to be able to control every part of it, every plug, every light bulb. I want control over, and that may be uh, what does it for me. I may end up getting this. So I will let you know as I do move into an apartment and I get things like the Hue, perhaps. Next up, I just want to mention that the iPad Mini has sold out of its initial stock run. The Black Slate models are now two-week shipping time for all capacities. And uh, the two-week ship time uh, is curious as the 3G or LTE ones are mid-November. So I'm curious, two weeks first mid-November, which is actually first there. So anyways, uh, next up, uh, we've got some competitor news. First up is Android and Google. So Google... Uh, did do uh, their event via press releases instead. With Hurricane Sandy, they did cancel their event, but they still released their products as planned. Google's updating Android, the 4.2, which they're calling a new flavor of Jelly Bean to basically say it's very similar to Android 4.1. So uh, the first big feature is Miracast. Basically, AirPlay, but more widespread support amongst different devices. Uh, Google's open, as you know. So, industry standard Wi-Fi display sharing protocol that allows new devices like the Nexus 4, which I'll talk about later, to stream audio and video to televisions. Miracast boxes for existing TVs are expected to go on sale from a variety of companies very soon, and they expect them to be under $99, uh, kind of uh, hitting at Apple TV's price point. 
Meerkats will soon be built directly into TVs. LG is already committed to building it into all of their 2013 TVs, uh, smart TVs. Google says developers can use each screen independently for big screen gaming and other apps. Uh, 4.2 also includes gesture t uh, typing keyboard, basically very similar to swipe uh, for those familiar with that. They've also uh, integrated something similar to uh, iOS's panorama mode in a different, in a different implementation. Basically, uh, the camera prompts you to line up and take overlapping shots of a scene, which then sketches it together to make an impressive panorama, kind of like street view, as they say. It's uh, basically, it's called Photosphere. Uh, there'll be a viewer for Google+, Plus, as well as an Android 4.2. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty cool there, but yeah, another thing Apple's already done. Uh, something Apple hasn't done is multiple user support on tablets. 4.2 is adding that. So if you have a tablet, multiple users. Each user gets their own apps and data. If the same app is installed on both users, it takes up just one amount of space. You don't have to download it twice. It's already there, ready to go. Uh, other notable improvements include daydream mode, essentially a screensaver. I'm not sure why you'd want one on a tablet, but anyways, uh, the ability to take actions directly from expanded notifications. A number of accessibility improvements, including the ability to zoom in on any part of the screen, kind of like iOS does already. Widgets are now supported on the lock screen, and you can swipe directly into the camera, kind of like on iOS. So a bunch of new improvements. Uh, Many that we already have in iOS, many that are found on Windows Phone 8 and uh, Kindle devices. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyways, a good improvement there. Uh, finally, iTunes Match is being copied not by Amazon alone, but now by Google. So they will scan your music collection and song match it against Google Play's catalog. And that will be automatically added to your online library with needing to upload it. Uh, the thing here, though, is their library on Google Play is less than that of iTunes. So you may find that your music is not matched as frequently as iTunes does. It will be available in Europe at launch on November 13th and is coming to the U.S. soon after. Uh, big thing here, it's going to be free. Free storage for all your music, free matching, free syncing. Uh, so iTunes Match is a paid service. This will be free. Uh, they're also launching, Google is launching their, Google, uh, their music services in more countries. Uh, they're uh, branching outside the United States, which is a good thing for sure. In other news is their device lineup. So us at Apple, we have iPad minis, iPads, iPhones, iPod touches, things like that. We have three devices to talk about here with Google. We have the LG Nexus 4 launching on November 13th with T-Mobile starting at a price point of $299. It's got a 4.7 inch display. So yes, once again, Google is going big, big, big. These phones will soon be 10 inch phones. Um, I, I kid, but it gets bigger every year. I believe the Nexus, uh, Galaxy Nexus was 4.5 inches. I'm not exactly sure, but that's memory I'm going off there. Uh, Google has not included LTE in this model. As we'll talk about a little bit, also let me talk about it now. The Verge basically defends Google's decision here that oh, the evil carriers are to blame, that oh, we can't include LTE because of that. That's a bunch of baloney. It really is. I mean, they could do it. They could do one model that has LTE, and if you have a carrier that works with it, great. If not, that's okay, too. Kind of like how the new iPad, the iPad 3, did that. And Google could have done this, but they decided not to. So that's a bunch of baloney. The Verge is basically being a Google apologist here. And uh, it's, it's hilarious because last year with the iPhone 4S, they, they basically said, oh, the iPhone 4S is a terrible phone. No one should buy this because, you know, there's no LTE. They didn't go that far, but they did say it was a, a very big thing. It didn't have it. Now, we're a year later, iPhone 5 has it, and uh, Google has decided not to include it. So, no LTE in their flagship Nexus phone, uh, something that the Galaxy Nexus has. Uh, but they're including a wireless charging dock. So now both Windows and Google wirelessly charge. iOS is the only platform that doesn't do that. Uh, T-Mobile uh, is the launch partner, as I mentioned earlier. It is called the Nexus 4. Next up is uh, our two new tablets. First up is the Samsung Nexus 10. Starting at $399, this is a little bit bigger than uh, the iPad, I believe, and with a different aspect ratio and they are not using the 4x3 that Apple has smartly decided to use, but their competitors don't go with. So $399 start price point at 16 gigabytes, or I believe $100 more for the 32 gigabytes. Wi-Fi only. 
Uh, it's got a resolution of 2560 by 1600, which is the same as the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro, for those keeping track. Display is on par with the iPad's Retina display, according to The Verge. Sharp text, excellent color fidelity, and great viewing angles. So yeah, Wi-Fi only for this, and uh, you just have the two capacities to choose from. Seems like a good product, we'll see. Uh, it is running Android, which, again, I'm not a fan of, but some people like it. Uh, last up is the Nexus 7. Big thing here is capacity. It is now offered at 200 bucks for 16 gigabytes, and 32, buck, uh, 32 gigs for 249. These are both Wi-Fi only, but Google is launching an HSBA Plus model, 32 gigabytes at $300. So now the iPad mini is competing against the $199 price point for the same capacity. And for double the capacity, uh, you get HSBA Plus at $300. So uh, basically the iPad mini is now put up against even higher competition. But once again, I have to mention, the iPad mini is a 7.9 inch device versus a seven inch device. Different class of tablet and it, sh it is in a different price point and it's there for a reason. And perhaps next year, as Apple scales production and is able to get lower price points, that will become less of an issue. Now, closing out the show is some Windows Phone 8 news. We've got two stories today. First up, uh, they're in the middle of their event right now. I wanted to do the show and not delay, but uh, so here's what we know so far. First up, they're integrating something called Kids Corner. So what is Kids Corner? Well, Kids Corner is uh, basically, it looks like to me an app. So there's this little icon on the home screen called Kids Corner. When you load it up, that's kind of where kids go. They're kind of stuck in there uh, and it enables them to have, you know, show them whatever games you select, you know, music, uh, videos, uh, and apps. You're able to select which ones they're allowed to see. So it's basically a way to hand your phone to your kid and have them play with your phone, but play in a safe area. So that is Kids Corner. They've also announced Pandora Radio, Cut the Rope, Urban Spoon, and many more apps are coming to Windows Phone 8. That event is currently in progress. I will let you know as more details do come out. So that is the show today. That is what's going on in the Apple world today. Thanks for tuning in. You can find the show notes at iwakepodcast.com. I also do this thing, I Wake Podcast again. Uh, I Wake Again, I should say. Uh, my hardware is filling up, so I'm trying to talk a little bit faster now. I Wake Again, an episode is coming out uh, today or tomorrow for those. Sorry about the weekend not having one. Uh, you can sign up for that at iwakepodcast.com slash again. I also do videos over at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. I'm very close to 100 subscribers there. Become one of those 100 by subscribing to my channel there, youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. Thank you for listening or watching. I will be back hopefully tomorrow for another edition of iWake. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to everyone again real soon. Aloha.